So first of all, uh, Peter, thank you for your time uh, to share our thoughts and ideas uh, about your work. Um, well, first of all, I would like to ask you, um, how did you arrive to the kind of site-specific works that you mostly do today? It's a long process, you know, I mean, I'm doing this for many years and I, I, I got seriously involved into the art scene in the late 70s, which was mainly, uh, I mean, I was, I was 20, I was very young, uh, and in the 70s, uh, the main focus was on conceptual art and on performance. So it was activities that have been kind of immaterial. So it was very unusual that an artist would do paintings or, or classical sculptures. But as you know, this kind of changed radical in the 80s. And this caused for me a kind of uh, confusion because I was just getting ready to uh, be in, in, involved in conceptual things and then the classical forms came back. So I, I, was, I was never uh, doing paintings, but I was always interested in, 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 in painting as a kind of uh, artistic convention, if you want so. But from the very beginning, I, uh, 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 I was very much interested in, uh, in the relation between the painting and the space. That means architecture. And uh, uh, in, uh, in particular, in the early 80s, I, I did a lot of research about, uh, on one hand, science fiction movies, which I think is still an issue in, in, in my work. And on the other hand, on uh, film architecture in general, especially from the 20s and the 30s. So movies like Metropolis or uh, Caligari or Nosferatu, you know, this kind of dark, uh, very loaded uh, uh, films, masterworks. And uh, in these films, uh, the architecture doesn't fulfill a, a, a kind of function in terms of uh, uh, usability. So the only, uh, the, the main thing is, is the kind of the emotional part. And I think that's still uh, an aspect I'm, uh, I'm interested in. Uh, in. In 84, the Macintosh was introduced and this was the moment where I decided that the tool I'm going to work in the future will be a digital tool, will be the, the computer. And uh, at that time, of course, the programs have been very simple and uh, the possibilities very limited. But from then on, it was clear that this is a kind of paradigmatic shift and this is gonna change uh, our notion of images, our contribution of images and also the production of images. And this was leading, I mean, this was leading from, uh, from, from two dimensional work to, uh, uh, to the painting in the space, in the, in the gallery space or in the exhibition space and at a certain moment, I, I, I skipped the painting and, and there was just a space left. So this, this was the kind of uh, 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 development over, over the years. I think that uh, Caligari should, should have been a, a very huge influence because of the notion of space is, is, is very, very different from any other science fiction movie. And that idea of uh, an invasion of a space and an immersion in a space is something that is, is very clear in your work. And could you, tell, could you tell us something about the imaginary in your work? Uh, because uh, there are some, some images that are repeated. Like, for example, I saw a, a Super 8 movie in your webpage uh, that uh, it, it has an ant that uh, moves around uh, along many things. Well, it's, it, it's, it's a kind of like, it's like a visual vocabulary. There are a few visual images I'm uh, uh, I'm using 
since more or less the beginning. The end that you mentioned, the tube, uh, uh, the globe, the brain. So this, this, uh, these are all images that they have a kind of universal dimension. So they are very easy to, uh, to have an access to. They are not very much uh, de determinated by a spe specific culture. So I assume in Asia, they mean something similar as in South America or in Europe or... And uh, 92, I was invited to uh, the documenter Nine in Castle. And uh, uh, I was then more or less a no name and was put in a very prominent uh, place in the entrance hall next to the maybe key figure of the show, Bruce Nauman. And uh, the work was published uh, very often in, uh, in, in magazines, papers, but also on, on TV programs, because uh, I, I think that's the reason, because the image is so significant and the image is perfect for reproduction. So everybody has an, an idea what an ant is. The, the connotations, there are positive connotations, there are also kind of uh, irritating connotations. Uh, it's black and white, it's very significant. Uh, in, a, in a big amount, it builds a kind of ornament. Uh, it's also about the collective, there are kind of social connotations. But uh, all these kind of aspects uh, think have not been the reason why I ch was choosing it for a Super 8 film. The Super 8 film was done in a garden uh, in Italy in a friend's house and there was a, a newspaper on the ground in the grass and an uh, ant was running over it and it seemed very attractive because it, it looked like like uh, a letter started to move, you know. It, 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 it's not the ant in the grass, it's not the ant in nature. It's, it's the body in relation to a system of information. And I think this is still uh, a key aspect. It's, uh, it's about con communication. And, and how, how architecture has begun to be included in your work? Uh, because I, I think there is a, um, a, a different um, a confrontation with the space in your work because you begin with an idea of you know, more close to the idea of wallpaper and then you move into something that takes over the, the whole space and um, produce some uh, spaces that are more um, thought for for uh, an immersion uh, experience no an immersive experience how this uh, idea of architecture has evolved in your work this specific kind of space has to do with a tool you know i, I think it has to do uh, when, when we look when we look at the history of architecture of course uh, uh, the tools and the methods have been you know, had always an influence on the on the built architecture. And how do you manage the difference between the real space and the computer space? Because something is project a work in the computer and then you have to go to the real space. How this relationship have evolved in your work? I mean, it was, it, it was, it was growing. First project had been very simple also because in the 80s, in the late 80s, early 90s, it was just the screen that you had to, uh, to do large scale uh, uh, images. So digital printers, large scale digital printers are just 20 years old. So there was a kind of development in terms of the technique, but I think the procedure was always more or less the same. So I go and see a space and because of the specific uh, circumstances, I decide what kind of motif, what kind of scale, what, of, what kind of material, because in the meantime, it's also possible to do uh, moving spaces. It's not just a wallpaper space anymore. You can project the whole space and you can rotate the space or drop the space. So, but usually the first thing is to see the space and then to develop. 
the project, but there are, of course, there are also kind of uh, uh, exceptions, like I was showing Buenos Aires, because unfortunately mm -hmm. I was not able to travel, which I really regret, regret, and I hope to I can do that in the future. So this project is really based on on digital information and conversations we did like we do now. You know, this is a kind of it's unbelievable anyway that this is possible. Um, how how do you um, conceive the viewers' experience? Uh, I mean, it's something that you uh, um, somehow uh, imagine from the beginning of your project, or is something that appears along the production of the project? I mean, or or after the treatment of the space, uh, is the viewers' experience from the beginning of your project, or is something that appears later? Well, it makes a difference if you make a show in a museum or you make an uh, installation in a subway station. You know, it's, 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 a different, uh, uh, it's a different public, it's different people, and I think that's something to consider. So in a museum context, of course, it's, it's, there is a possibility to deal with more specific information. Uh, you can assume that people know something about the history of of art uh, from the last century and now. When you, when you do something in public space, uh, the situation is very different. You know, it's, it's a wide range of, uh, uh, of uh, spectators. And uh, so I, I consider the, the context that something I, 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 uh, that plays a role. Uh, for me, it's always very interesting how kids are reacting, you know, because kids, this is very direct. So if it works with, with kids, it makes some, it, it means something. So I, I, did, I did an installation in the, in the Centre Pompidou, in the forum, this is this lower part. I was invited to do a, a, a video installation there and I decided to do a, a labyrinth, a maze with white rats. You know, it's, there is one rat coming in, it's running, uh, and then second. Thing. And I didn't know that the kindergarten is next to it. And it turned out that the kids would react uh, extremely on, on, on that work. So parents have to, have to take them out because they would run until they are completely exhausted. So this, <laughs> this, this is a very interesting experience, you know, because there is, it means that there, that there is, a, that there is a, a, an aspect in the work that communicates very direct. Good. And, and now that you are talking about a video installation, can you tell us something about the, the use of, uh, of moving images or the use of sound that you usually, uh, that usually appears in your video installations in special? Well, I was mentioning my interest in, in, in the movies. So there was always an interest in, in the moving image, of course, so because it's, it's another kind of powerful uh, medium. And it developed over the years because in the early 80s, I was happy to, to have a, a still image in a, in a, in a decent uh, uh, resolution. But of course, all that changed in the last, we're talking about almost 40 years now. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing when you work with a tool like that, that even though your ideas are limited. You're always participating on a technical development. So this, this is uh, that's a great thing that uh, that you can always adjust it on uh, on 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 on, on, uh, on the possibility of the moment and, and and maybe to 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 try to push the limits, push even the limits. Uh, for the sound, it's also since many years always my same. Uh, kind of colleague and partner, Franz Kormassel, who is, who is doing the sound. So, so I believe in, in, uh, in uh, uh, sharing the labor, working with specialists, and, and, and uh, Kormassel is, is, is a great guy, uh, using, using sound almost like, like a sculpture. It has a very physical uh, We work together since many years. And can you tell us something more about the installation at Proa Foundation? Um, 
I don't know. Um, uh, uh, well, there are, there are many things there. For example, the this idea of entering a, a space and uh, think, uh, and face you know, this work uh, very very uh, at the beginning of, of of this exhibition is really. Uh, fantastic, it's, and it's really something amazing. Um, but you know, I, I I remember in 1997 when you did this huge installation for uh, Documenta. You uh, you have um, a, a very interesting dialogue with this huge uh, glass wall and 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 the and the space outside. No, this nature space. And, and here something similar happens because you know that the the, the wall to enter Proa is a, a, a glass wall, and you have a, a very interesting relationship between your work in the in in the exhibition and the work outside. And outside you you have a a, a, a very small river and you know a, a very very different context than the one in the in the installation in the in in, in the exhibition. So have you thought um, something about this context? Uh, well, of course, the special architecture of Proa. How, how you tell us something more about how you conceive this project? Cecilia was sending me photos of the installation and uh, you have the staircase going up. Mm -hmm. And I, I was using this kind of cube-like uh, distorted structure and without a, a, a visitor, it's, it's so difficult to recognize where the staircase goes through, you know. It's even hard to tell uh, what is up and what is down. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's really kind of, uh, it's, the, the notion of, of space is, 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 is very irritating. So, uh, when I got the invitation for the ex exhibition in Pro, I was very happy that it's the entrance hall. Uh, this is a situation I, I, I found myself very often in, uh, uh, in, in group shows, that I was in the entrance hall or in the staircase or in, like in Castle 97, it's like a huge long corridor. So it's, it's, it's not the kind of classic space where you look at art in a kind of uh, contempt contemplative, uh, uh, silent way. It's, it's more the situation uh, of transition, of, of moving through a space. And uh, I, I was asking myself, why, why is that? Why, why they always put me in, in, in that, in that, in that <laughs> space? And uh, probably one reason is that it's, that it's fast information I'm working. It's nothing where you have to uh, spend 10 minutes in, in, in front of. It's something that you, can, that you get when you pass by. And uh, uh, so on the level of, of galleries or museums, it's the entrance halls or the staircases. When you put that on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, uh, on, on the scale of a city, it's probably the subway station or the railway station or the airport. So these are the kind of hubs that you have in a, in a, in a kind of uh, architectural uh, system. And uh, I like that. So I, I, uh, I feel comfortable with this, mm -hmm. with that aspect. Yeah. In, 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 in Goa, it's especially beautiful with, 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 with the glass and trends that you see already from, you see the installation already from, from, the, uh, from the square outside. And we, we, we installed everything during the lockdown. So even then it was possible to, to have an idea of, uh, uh, of, the, of the space and the work. Mm -hmm. it has, uh, I think it has two, two aspects that are very uh, important of that space. That is probably something that you find in many of your installations. That is, um, first of all, it's a, it's a usual, usual space. I mean, it's the reception of the the Proa Foundation. I mean, there is a lot of people there doing things because there is a locker room and there are some other uh, services in that space. So that's uh, interesting how your installation um, 
is, uh, is, is part of this use of the space. And then in many other of your installations, as in, in, in PROA, um, you have to explore the space. I mean, you, you have a, a, first, um, a, a first impression of the space when you enter, but then you have to explore the space and you find some other uh, perspectives of the, of the same work. It's very, very different as, uh, as other uh, uses of uh, site-specific installation when you can see the, the whole uh, project in only one view. But in I, this yeah. case and many of your projects, I saw that you have to, you know, walk and find and discover some other perspective of, of work. Then that's, that's a very, very important part of your, of your projects. Yes, if there is always a kind of aspect of, of the labyrinth of, of the maze. Mm -hmm. That yes, you, of course, find in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of labyrinth is very important. And you know, it's very important for Argentinians because of Borges, uh, the labyrinth is, is, yes. is something that is part of, of our, our, our culture, hmm? our, 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 our literary culture. So it's um, well, it's 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 really very very interesting to have your installation in this uh, in this exhibition at Proa, um, and it's it's very interesting for people to have the 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 um, the opportunity no, to to see this kind of work in Buenos Aires. So sometimes. Uh, your work is is very known, but it's very known from photographs, or it's very known from the media, and that's something that you have to to deal with. I think. I think it's the first installation in uh, in uh, Latin America. Mm -hmm. There was never a big installation. <laughs> and how how do you deal with the uh, with the register of your works? I mean, with with the photographs and media and. Uh, how your work uh, moves along this all, all these uh, uh, different uh, kinds of, of information spaces. I mean, for most of the things I'm doing, this is the only uh, these are the only images that are still there. You know, the installations we spoke about in in Castle, they are of course gone. They are just photos left. And uh, so, uh, so the significance of of the things I'm doing was always playing a role for me. So, how it, how it, what, how is it, how is how is the media uh, reacting on it? Okay. So, and for ending this uh, this interview, I would like to ask you how how do you work in your studio? You you have a lot of assistants. You you prefer to to begin with a with an idea yourself, uh, uh, and then work with assistance. How, how do you work? Do you have it's, a, a it's, it's a very small team. So there is uh, my wife is involved. Uh, Julian, my assistant, is is involved. And then for certain projects, we uh, I, I have people that that help, but I prefer to have a kind of very. Uh, it's 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 a very small team, and a lot of the things of 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 course are also produced with companies, and uh, with them I'm I'm working since many years, so uh, it makes life easier. They know exactly what I want, and I know they are reliable. And uh, and if our things uh, 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 like the installation in uh, in uh, in Poa, we we have to look for a company on site because they have to print and to apply. So uh, therefore it's, it's anyway necessary to have somebody on the spot to do it and uh, usually it works well. So it's, it's, I mean, an uh, important part of the work is, is to communicate with, with, with the people that are involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, well, well, thank you, Peter, for your time, for your words, for uh, your uh, thoughts and for well uh, sharing with us your 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 installation at proa and for this this minutes to talk about your work and how it has evolved in the in the last years 
Uh, thank you so much. Thank you also very much. It's, it was a pleasure. It was also a pleasure with the whole team of, of, uh, of GROA, also with Sigismond and, and Juan that they trusted in my work. So I'm, I'm very happy that, that uh, it's, uh, it's on you in, in Buenos Aires. And I hope, I hope we, we, we meet in the near future, either in Buenos Aires or, or in Indiana. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. You are, you are, you are, you are everywhere. <laughs> so thank you so much.